He is sovereign over every aspect of the created world. He can command any part of creation to do his bidding. I would entitle this passage we're going to look at, look at liquid glory. Uh, it's the moment where Jesus reveals at the beginning of his ministry, reveals in a fairly public situation that he is Lord Creator. This is John 2, 1 through 12. On the third day, there was a wedding at Canaan, Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus also was invited to the wedding with his disciples. When the wine ran out, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to a woman, what does that have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. And his mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. And you know that Jesus fills six stone, large stone vessels that are filled with water he turns that water into gallons and gallons of wine, wine finer than had been there in the beginning. Now, this is a bit of a sleeper miracle. It just doesn't seem so amazing at first glance. So he turned water into wine, yada, yada. But what takes place here is, in fact, very significant. It's it's so significant that the capstone of the passage is that as a result of this miracle, Jesus' disciples believed in him. It deepened and strengthened their faith. It's, again, on the surface, doesn't seem like much of a miracle, not in comparison to some of the grander, more public miracles that Jesus did. But think about this. Until this point, Jesus had lived a pretty quiet life hiding his true identity, that is until the announcement by John the Baptist. But still, most of Palestine did, did not know who he is. His response to his mother is not meant to be rude, but it makes it clear that he's not ready to fully identify himself. Now, I love this. Mary doesn't know what Jesus is going to do, but she knows that she gave birth to the Son of God. So she, and he has the power to do whatever he wants to do. So she says to the servants, do whatever he tells you, because it's going to be good. You know the story. Jesus turned six large vessels of water into wine better than the wedding had served in the first place. Now, why does John summarize the miracle the way he did? He did? Jesus revealed his glory and it sealed the faith of the disciples. Now, here's what you need to know. This is what this passage is about. By turning water into wine, Jesus is demonstrating that he is the creator of all things. The creator the gospel declared him to be. As creator, he is sovereign over every aspect of the created world. He can command any part of creation to do his bidding. Makes me think of Jonah 4 when God commands a worm and the worm obeys him and eats a plant. Only the Lord God creator could command the molecules of water to transform into molecules of very fine wine. Let me say that again. Only the Lord creator could command molecules of water to transform into molecules of very fine wine. You don't have that ability. Don't try this at home. He's the glorious one who with words spoke the physical use universe into being. He has the right, authority, and power to command creation to do whatever he wants to do. Jesus of Nazareth is Lord Creator. When I read this passage, I think of Peter 
in his first letter to people who are struggling with suffering, encouraging believers to entrust themselves to their faithful creator. As creator of everything that exists, there's nothing he can't do for you. Rest in the glorious glory of who he is.